Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. This is the first video I've made in two weeks because we moved. So I have been busy trying to set up my new art room and um, it's still in process. <laughs> Might be for a while. Anyway, so I'm here on behalf of my creative year, hashtag my creative year. Uh, the prompt is repair. Now I know I've been taking the prompts literally I do that when I have something I can use, like fiber. Last time was the little sheep, the felt sheep, which I thought was so cute. But this time, again, it is literally repair. I have something that was broken, um, a knitting bowl that I bought back in, I don't know, about six or eight years ago at Maryland Sheep and Wool. And I just thought it was the cutest thing ever. So I bought it and I dropped it. It's been glued back with E6000, but I wanted to do something special. So I knew of a practice by Jap the Japanese with repairing things with gold. Um, they repair it. It says, um, oh, I hate to say, I hate to use the Japanese word because I'm, I'm not very good at pronunciation, but translated to golden joinery. It's K I N T. S-U-G-I, which means golden repair, is a centuries-old Japanese art of fixing broken pottery with special lacquer dusted with powdered gold, silver, or platinum. Beautiful seams of gold glint in the cracks of the ceramic ware, giving it a unique appearance. Now, I know some of them do it in red, and some do it in gold. Well, it just so happens that I had what I needed to do this with, because when we moved, I found all kinds of stuff I haven't seen in a while. So you'll see in the video, let me move this up here. You'll see in the video that I have this, and this is gold leaf that I've had, like I said, for many years. And it is separated by oranges, orange pieces of paper that are, whoops, that are very, very thin. And the gold is very delicate. There's a whole bunch of sheets left in here. I haven't used it very often because I've real I've used it sparingly because it was not cheap. So I hang on to it because I think it's a very cool thing that I hope to use again on something else lovely. Maybe not something I've broken. Then I purchased some of this. It's um it's iCraft Deco Foil Liquid Adhesive and your foil. Um, the kind that has is not gold leaf, but the colored foils will stick to this, and the gold leaf, oops, sorry, the gold leaf also sticks to it. So that's what I used, and I show them and I hold them up in the video to show them to you. I'm not going to show you the finished product, I'm going to get on with the video so you can see what I did. Sorry. Thank you. 
Okay, now that the video is over, I wanted to talk about a couple things that happened while I was doing it. Um, first of all, I had no idea what I was doing, and it showed in the video, but that's okay because this was a learning experience, and I would definitely do foil again, but number one, I would not have the ceiling fan on while I'm doing it because if you're watching closely under on the paper towel, there were little parts of gold foil that were kind of hopping around on the paper towel. And when I was trying to open it up to apply it, <laughs> the, the foil was like going, you know, trying to move around on the paper. So that's a good thing to know. No ceiling fan while applying gold foil, um, gold leaf. The second thing is the reason the lines are so fat is because this was glued together with E6000, except for this one last piece that I glued on myself, which looks even fatter than this one here. Let me go in. See how fat this is? This is because this is E6000, and then I glued the uh, foil glue on top of that, so it made it really fat, um, and it's kind of uh, protrudes more. This my husband glued. It was much thinner, much nicer, much neater. And the, then I put the, the foil glue over it, and it looks much better. I did this when I got, it got a little crazy. Um, see, and then, then I set the bowl down before the glue was dried, and it rolled over on the paper towel, 
And when I did it, I didn't realize that the glue had smudged on the side. So when I put the foil on, it stuck to all the smudgy places. <laughs> so it's a little crazy. Yeah, it's just, uh, <laughs> I tried to get it off, but you know, the glue's on there. I suppose if I really worked hard and you know, took an exacto knife or something and did it, I could get it off. But you know what? I'm gonna leave it here as a badge to learning. See, look on the inside. <laughs> it got a little crazy. <laughs> I had a good time doing it, even though it's not fabulous looking. Although if I just turned it upside down all the time, it would look nice, but I'm okay with it because I learned something from it and it was fun. And I use supplies that I have it, I've had on hand um, for many years. This is new. This stuff I've probably had for 10 years or more. So, you know, you know how us crafters are. We hang on to everything for dear life until we squeeze the last penny out of it. So um, I'm going to foil again uh, another time. <laughs> Please, God, don't let it be on another broken knitting bowl. Because I, now this, I don't know if I can use this as a knitting bowl anymore. But it'll be a bowl where I'll put a, a, a nice piece of yarn, a nice ball of yarn in it or something. Depends on if it catches on where I glued it back together whether or not I can use it. But overall, I'm really excited that I did it. I taught myself something else. I learned some valuable lessons. And I showed that in mixed media and different kinds of art, that repairs don't have to be ugly and they don't have to be painful. They just have to be done. Okay, thanks everybody. See you next time. Bye.